Hi everyone, I'm Stephen and welcome to Audio Nautica. I've got a new project that I'm getting started on here. This one's a little bit weird, so you'll just need to bear with me. But as you can see, I'm sure the idea is to work on these custom speakers. Now, this could end up being a lesson on how not to go about building some custom speakers, or it could turn out just fine. I don't know, and there's only one way to find out. But I've had this idea for quite some time of wanting to build some custom speakers. I helped with by my friend FB, who's worked with me on a few other projects on the channel. And so the original idea was to do what one would normally do, and that's to, to build up some speaker boxes out of you know, ply and so on. But this is where this kind of gets really, really weird. These are actually made out of, believe it or not, these are made out of the board on pipes from a pipe organ. So what you are looking at is a section of pipe, wooden pipe, from a pipe organ that has been cut down to size to use for these speakers. Now, where this came from is because FB had these lying around, um, as anyone does, is have spare pipes lying around. And the thought was that this would be an easier way to go. Now, as it turned out, it has not been an easier way to go. And the reason for that is, is because there is not one single surface on these pipes that is actually square. So these are actually veneered. And so FB kind of really found this out when he went to veneer them, is that the surfaces weren't flat, they weren't square, an absolute nightmare. So we had to do all sorts of filling to veneer them. Also, the outside of them had lead paint that had to be stripped off. You might be able to see on the inside, the lead paint is still there. So dealing with nasty lead paint. So in the end, we've kind of come to the conclusion that these things ended up being a whole lot more work than we thought that they would be. But I've got them. So for the sake of having nothing to lose, and before I put any more effort into the actual cabinets themselves, the plan is, is I'm going to actually assemble these as speakers and see whether they sound any good. Ideally, one should actually, well, not ideally at all, one should unconditionally do the calculations for speaker volumes there. They're quite important. And, and that was sort of the plan, but in the end, um, this has just been a bit of a, a rule of thumb, I think, guess in terms of the size. So there could be issues there as well. So these may end up not being very good at all. But for the sake of, of having these and giving them a go, I thought that I'd put them together and see what they're like. Um, so I'm not going to do any more on the cabinets themselves. If I do decide to proceed with them, then at this stage, I think I'll probably stain them and veneer them. Some splits have opened up. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see, it might be a little bit the wrong angle, but there's a split has opened up there, which is probably the most obvious one, just on the, this is rounded, so just on that round that's opened up. There's a few other splits here, so those are sort of the most obvious ones. Um, I guess I'll probably end up with grill cloths over this as well, so maybe they won't be quite so obvious. But um, anyway, I'm not going to worry about that now because it's, it's all academic if I assemble these things and they sound terrible. So what I have got in terms of components is obviously I've got some um, banana plug binding posts here that will go in the back. In terms of crossovers, um, these crossovers were sort of surplus out of, pair, out of a pair of uh, JBL marquee series speakers. Um, which are rated for a whole lot more power than what these will be. So uh, hopefully this crossover should be okay. In terms of actual uh, speakers themselves, I've got, this is a ScanSpeak. Uh, it's an 18W 
1835-00 made in Denmark so that should hopefully be a nice driver and then for the tweeter I have got a pair of legendary Dyne Audio D28-2 so back in the day you used to be able to buy these as components from Dyne Audio, you no longer can buy components from Dyne Audio, you need to buy the completed speakers. So I am quite pleased to have a pair of these. So this is what I've got. Um, the other slight little issue that I've got too is these um, crossovers. Because the way they were mounted in the marquees, they had um, speak on connectors mounted in here on the PCB and then they were screwed onto the front panel. So there aren't actually any mounting holes. So what I am going to actually end up doing, I think is put a couple of anchor points. I'm gonna screw a couple of anchor points into the ba bottom of these bases. And I know this sounds pretty shonky, but I'm actually gonna give a go at cable tying them. As long as they can't move or rattle around, they should be fine. But I think that's probably my best bet at this stage is a couple of anchor points and cable tie them down to the anchor points so they can't move. And that will get that in there. So that's the plan. Uh, I'll come back when I've made a bit more progress. Okay, so this was actually a little bit less painless than I thought it would be to get all this done. As you can see, I have got the crossover is mounted in there. Hopefully that will be secure enough, we'll see. I've got the tails for my speakers are done. And then if we come around the back side, uh, this is just sitting here at the moment, but yeah, I've got that connector is hooked up as well. And I've also got a hunk of um, sound deadening material here ready to go. So I think I shall put this thing together now and see what happens. All right, guys, it's all together. So let's um, light the blue touch paper and see if anything happens. No bass. Something is not right. All right. Well, we'll have to see. Got treble, but no bass. Okay, guys, it looks like we have a fairly severe catastrophe here. Uh, I have tested this with my test speakers hooked up to the bass drivers, and that works fine. So it tells me that the crossover is working correctly. Um, these Dyne Audios, by the way, just a tiny little bit of listening I've done already, they sound spectacular. Um, but I get absolutely nothing out of these scan speaks. So as I say, I've tested this configuration, it works fine. And when I do a fairly rudimentary test, which you kind of would have thought that I'd done by now, but apparently I haven't, These are um, open circuit. Looking to the left of shot, you'll see the um, multimeter there. But when I put it across the speaker, nothing. Open circuit. And the other one is the same. So two of them. Um, obviously, I've never actually tested these things. I know I've never had them in anything and tried to make noise out of them. Um, this project has been on the back burner for so long, I honestly can't remember uh, what I have and haven't done. But it would appear that I've never actually gotten around to uh, metering these things out. And I think part of that is because there were a couple of candidates that I was looking at using for base drivers, and it took a while to get to the point of settling on these. But yeah, these seem to be open circuit. 
I just grab the other one. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. So yeah, that is really catastrophic. So I'm not really sure what I'm going to do, to be honest. Um, I suspect that these probably can't be repaired. I mean, the cone feels free enough. They don't feel like they're blown. As in a mechanical failure, the cones feel all right, but yeah, open circuit. So I would suspect that they're probably not going to be repairable, or if they can be, it's going to cost far more than they're worth. But these boxes have been made around these speakers, so whether I can come across something else for not a huge amount of money that will fit, um, or whether we go back to square one and I acquire some other drivers and we just decide to do new boxes, um, I don't know. I am encouraged by these these Dyn audios. But anyway, that's where I'm at. So um, I guess I'll be back once I've decided what to do. Okay, guys. So I did decide in the end to go ahead with getting these scan speak drivers repaired. I've just come back from Speaker Hospital, so it was 396 Aussie dollars to get both of them repaired. I could have bought the new version of these, uh, but it would have cost me more, not a huge amount more. But at the end of the day, it was either fix them or bend them. And I hate bending things that don't need to be bent. So step one is going to be to check that these are not open circuit. Right, so that looks about right. So they measure 6.3 ohms. DC resistance. That seems like a reasonable reading. And that one measures 6.5. That's about right too. Let's light the blue touch paper. Workingness. I can't play that for long because of copyright. But there's actually noise coming out of the base driver. So why don't I put it inside the enclosure and see what happens. So as you can see and here we've got that uh, ScanSpeak driver mounted now in this case. And the good news is it doesn't sound absolutely terrible. Uh, I've just done some very basic kind of listening just to verify that it doesn't sound absolutely terrible. So I think the next step will be to build up the other speaker. Okay guys, as you can see, we've got both of these speakers now fully assembled. Just before I test these, I just want to give a really big shout out to my Patreons. I'm only a small channel, I know that. So at the moment I've only got two Patreons, Chris Mogford and Nam Tran. But Nam Tran has been with me for quite some time, so I just can't thank you enough for sticking with me. And I also want to thank all of the other Patreons that have been with me for various periods of time over the journey, but for whatever reason, aren't with me at the moment. I still appreciate that you took the time to become a Patreon. So thank you so much to all of you, and also just encourage you to subscribe to my channel and give a like if you've enjoyed this content. So let's dive in now and put some noise through these speakers. And I'm just going to go with something from the uh, YouTube audio library so I can play this without having to worry about copyright problems.
So I just turn that down a bit so I can talk over that. I'm really, really pleased with how this has turned out, to be honest. I gave these a test with the signal generator as well. Gave it a sweep. I'm really impressed with the bass response that I'm getting out of these. I mean, of course, they're not going to be super bassy. Not expecting them to be, but you know, even down to around 35 hertz, I'd say I'm getting useful bass, which was more than I was expected. These are not going to be efficient speakers. Uh, they are sealed enclosures. Sealed enclosures tend to be much more forgiving in terms of design parameters. And since we didn't really use any design parameters in this, I knew from day one it was going to have to be a sealed box. Um, you really do have to get your sums right if you're going to be using a port. So sealed boxes by their nature do tend to be um, much less efficient. They need a lot more power to drive them. I'm only driving this right now with my Leak Stereo 70s, so um, that's the, the test amp that I have out here in the workshop. I am looking forward to getting these onto a, a gruntier amp and just seeing what it is that they can do. But um, the, the sweet gen was encouraging. I didn't see any obvious dips or peaks. Um, if there was anything catastrophic, I would have noticed anyway in general listening. Now there is equipment that you can get. You can get spe special um, microphones and then um, equipment that you can plug it into to be able to characterize a speaker. I don't have any of that equipment at the moment. The only microphone I've got is this uh, lav. I do actually have another microphone coming along um, that I want to use just to improve my general audio quality in YouTube and for voiceover and so, and so on, but I don't have it yet. I might end up seeing if I can do something with that to try to get some sort of a characterization for these speakers, but I'm not sure how practical that will be. We'll, we'll just wait and see. So I'm going to call this the end of part one. There will be a part two hopefully, of this series on these speakers, which I'm calling the Bourdons, because I haven't done anything yet with the timber work, uh, as you can see. So that will need to be sanded, stained and varnished. And also I'm going to need to make uh, some grill cloths because we have these, um, these gorgeous Dyn Audio dome tweeters here, but they're sitting proud. So it could be very easy for something to push those domes in and that would be really really bad given these are just spectacular tweeters so that's something else that i need to work on so my intention is is that when i've done that i'll be back with a part two of this video thank you so much for watching please do like subscribe and share i love to read your comments are these the craziest speakers that you've ever seen in the world maybe you know some that are crazier tell me all about it and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Bye for now.